Okay, let's roll. How about that one? Uh, better to win ugly you know, <laughs> than, than lose pretty. So, um, came out, swung the bats great again. Um, you know, off, a, off another capable arm of theirs that, that's pretty good. And we came out and had a, a good approach offensively. Um, stuck with it. Um, you know, we, we kicked the ball around a little bit. Uh, you know, that, that team over there is, is a veteran team. They know how to hit. They know how to fight. Um, they're... They're never out of a game, you know. They put together good at bats against our guys, um, you know. But we, we gave them some extra outs there that, that didn't help out. Um, so from that standpoint, it, it wasn't uh, wasn't very good defensively. We didn't we didn't pitch it as well as we're capable of certainly, but um, you know we didn't do our job behind them defensively as well as I would like to have. Um, but we got some things to clean up on the bump. A you, little bit. you touched on that uh, pitching aspect, whereas yesterday with Halverson and Butler, when they struggled, told them they'd be fine. They were freshmen, but it's veterans like Fitzpatrick and Teeting are struggling. What's kind of your takeaways from that today? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, those guys, you know, for, for being veteran guys, you know, it, it's at first appearance is always, um, you know, one that, that you try not to get too, uh, you put, read too much into it, you know, even though those are tough situations. But, you know, Fitzy got a little sped up, and, and Maddie, Maddie was leaving the ball up a little bit. He's got to be more effective when he's down in the zone. Um, and and but again, we, we didn't help him out defensively. But uh, you know, I expect those guys to get better. Um, th those weren't their best outings. And Marco, same way. I expect I expect him to be better. What do you, you kind of think of that as like a first game, kind of getting everything in check, or do you think there was something else that kind of contributed to that? Um, you know, I think it was it was one of those games where you know if you if you made a mistake, um, you know, team was is a uh, is a solid hitting team that has a good approach and and um, you know keeps the bat through the zone a long time. Um, so we're not going to be able to you know trick them. You know, I, I guess They're, they battle with two strikes, put the ball in play, and uh, they, they found a lot of holes. That, you know, today. So when when you have that type of game going on. Um, you know, you have to live down in the zone and try and get them off the barrel, and then we just had a hard time doing that today. Was Carlo kind of the bright spot at the end there, being able to come in a one-run game and get three clean outs? Yeah, that was, uh, you know, he and Hunter, Hunter uh, threw the ball well. Um, and Hunter gave up a double there, but, uh, you know, that was a play that you know, hung up there long enough to where maybe we make that play. I know the sun's tough over there at that time of the game, but, um, you know, Carlone threw the ball well, uh, you know, in the ninth. and. Didn't give me any more of an ulcer today, so that was good. Is he available for tomorrow? I think so. Um, he only threw 12 pitches, so I, I would think he would be he'd be hot tomorrow again. Assuming um, you know he, he hasn't uh, he hasn't thrown back to back days, you know, like that. But but with only 12 pitches, uh, we'll see how he is tomorrow morning. But I knowing Cole, I think he'll probably be available tomorrow. What do you have to say? How about Isaiah Jackson? I mean, two huge back to back games. How proud are you of his growth? Um, he's he's doing outstanding. That's that's what he's capable of when he when he's uh, aggressive and stays balanced. Um, he, he can clearly hit the ball a long ways, and it's fun to fun to watch him break out a little bit offensively because he, um, you know, he's a guy that we're going to need. Um, I'm not saying he has to have, drive in six runs every day, but but we need him to be consistent throughout the year, and, and he started off great. After uh, Santa Clara kind of mounted that rally and erased the 10-4 to lead, it showed a lot about your offensive resilience, being able to come back and get the lead. Was that something that uh, was expected of you, or were you worried that after you lost that lead, the confidence would be shaken? Um, you know, I, I don't think the confidence would be shaken, no. Um, but that just it's the importance of staying resilient offensively and, and continue to score runs. You can no lead is safe ever, um, especially here at Muni. It, it's just one of those ballparks that, that you got to score and keep scoring when you have when you have a lead you can't let up and um, so kudos to the offense for continuing to, to score rounds and pile on. What do you think about Cole's skill set makes him your ideal closer with the weapons you have in the bullpen? Um, you know he has uh, his, his fastball plays up um, you know on guys it, it uh, you know with his height being, being as tall as he is and extension that he gets he's um, you know and low to mid 90 mile an hour arm, but he, it, it plays a little bit higher than that. And he's got, uh, you know, he's got, he has stuff, you know, that, that we're kind of missing, you know, up and down the, the, the pitching staff. He has a little bit more stuff than everybody else. So um, for me, that's, that's why I like him back there. And he's, he's not afraid and he likes to come after guys, which is good. You would mentioned kind of some of the defensive miscues and the errors that occurred. Uh, what do you feel like kind of contributed to those errors? Um, you know, one uh, guy's trying to just be too, too special, you know, instead of just make the play. Um, 
you know, New made a nice play there and on the run and then tried to throw it. And, you know, that's a tough play. Um, you know, Toby's got to understand we got a guy in second base there. We can't let that ball get past us. Um, and, and get down the line. Uh, I, I felt that I felt that we were a little bit late getting there on from a backing up standpoint as well. Um, and then uh, you know on Dina, you know we were up three I think at that point in time with with an out and uh, their leadoff hitter uh, Barron was on second and was stealing on the play. Um, you know on Dina, some would say, oh that's heads up. He, he had the guy picked dead to rights. So I would say just get the out. That guy wheels and scores. Hey, we're still up two with nobody on and two outs. Fine, Ooh, I like our chances. Um, but you know that being said, even though he uh, had him dead to rights, we, we forgot to execute the rundown properly and, and you know run him back to the base and then give it up. It just uh, panicked a little bit, sped up on him. So those you know instead of getting an out right there, now where it's no outs, run across another guy in scoring position. Uh, wheels kind of came off a little bit that inning. So. Um, those are things that we just can't afford to, to do um, defensively. Kind of things like that that can snowball too on a team, kind of get out of hand quickly. How do you make sure that when if something like that does happen, it doesn't snowball become a big issue? Uh, you know, we, we have to be above it on the mound and, and understand that there's some innings we got to get four outs or five outs. If the defense kicks it around behind us, um, we have to be able to, to try to stop the bleeding and execute the next pitch. Um, you know, on the flip side, on Dina, as I'm picking on him, he made a couple outstanding plays today too. That, that uh, you know, um, diving play, backhand gets up, throws the guy out. The, the short hop on the on the chopper, he made he made some very nice plays too. That one, it just uh, tried to do a little bit too much. What are your thoughts on Ryan Campos's slow start at the plate this year? I'm not worried. And then with Cromwick, who stepped in for Kean today, he had some struggles as well. Can you talk about kind of what went into the decision-making process there and then what you made of Josiah today? Uh, you know, Crom um, is a capable bat that, that uh, we played the matchup, right-handed, left-handed matchup. And I, I um, went with him, tried to get him in there and, and get him going a little bit because we're going to need we're gonna need guys, you know. Um, and I think he's he's one of our capable right-handed bats off the bench, the, the depth pieces that, can, that should be mixing in there. Um, so, you know, I, I felt like going with him today and, you know, it is, is the game unfolded a little bit and, and they brought in, uh, brought in right handers and toward we got later in the game. If we had a lead, I was going to put Boob out there for defensive purposes and left handed bat. So it worked out just fine. Obviously I would like Crom to, to, uh, maybe have a little more success than he did, but that's one game. It'll be fine. Is there a plan to see him maybe, you know, behind this tomorrow in terms of, you know, can't be with a long day? behind the plate today? Um, I'm not sure yet. Uh, that's something we'll talk about. If, if we if we gave Campy a breather and, and either put him in the outfield or DH, it would probably be Newman would be behind the plate. Um, you know, he's been catching great and, and swinging the bat really well. So um, we haven't made that decision yet, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll go talk about it as a coaching staff. What's the biggest thing you still want to learn about this group? Um, well, we're being tested, which is good. Uh, certainly today, on, on having to bounce back, so that part of it is good. But you know, we, we're just going to have to, you know, the roles are going to continue to evolve and form on the, on the pitching staff. I mean, I think you can see that. That I guess it's, I don't know if it's good or bad, but no job is safe, and nobody has, a, you know, lockdown spot of hey, this is this is X, Y, and Z that we're going to use on the, on the mound or on the pitching staff so you know there will be competition throughout the year uh, for innings and, and guys that are not getting it done people are going to get opportunities so but ultimately I'd like that to solidify at some point in time um, but you know early with with uh, the young staff that we have we're going to have to deal with some growing pains a little bit um, but hopefully that's why hopefully our offense can, can pick it up when they need it and um, but I, I'm, I'm confident they'll figure it out and we'll, we'll get better. Who stepped up the most as a leader in the clubhouse? Um, you know, I think there, there are several of them in there. You know, Harris Williams, um, you know, Isaiah Jackson, you know, Campy does his thing, uh, Jacob Tobias. Um, you know, those, those are all guys that, that are, you know, leaders in their own right. Uh, you know, Brandon Compton's a lead by example guy. Um, you know, younger, younger guys, Colt Carlone's turning into, you know, one of the clubhouse favorites in there and, and um, you know, getting getting guys riled up and getting them going for the game. That's great. Thomas Burns is very quiet, but leads by example. So there, there's a number of guys. Matt Teating, you know, is, is a guy on the, on the pitching staff that, and, and uh, Jonah Giblin, those guys are, are veteran guys that know how to get it done. And 
um, you know, I expect them to, you know, to not let things speed up on them, slow things down, and like I said, I think they'll be they'll be better in the next outings. What about confidence? What do you feel like has allowed them to kind of take over in this kind of hitting streak that he's been on these last two games? Um, just uh, kid's work ethic is off the charts. You know, he puts in a ton of ton of time. Um, you know, we're trying to refine his swing, and you know, he still he still has has things to learn, um, obviously. But but uh, he's off to a great start, and um, but the kids uh, couldn't happen to a better kid. He just uh, he continues to work, and and he bleeds maroon and gold. He loves it here, and and um, you know, to, for a kid that just holds a little bit of extra. Um, Care, I guess, factor for for ASU. Not that the other guys don't there. I mean, I think as a whole, we have a very good staff that are, there are players that, that love it here. But um, Comp just has a little bit of extra, you know, bleeds a little bit deeper maroon and deeper gold than, than most in there. So he's outstanding. Love to see it happen. You and Sam have kind of talked about. You told us preseason about how you want to make sure that with the pitching. One bad pitch doesn't lead to a bad inning, and you don't let things spiral out of control. Seemed like you did a little bit better job of that last night. Seemed like today there were a lot of struggles, especially with the bullpen. Is there anything specific that you saw that kind of let things spiral a little bit that you maybe want to cut down on? Um, you know, I think uh, you know you, you can pick to certain guys. Um, you know, I think just kind of executing the pitches and staying down in the zone. I think uh, where we got hurt today, we were up in the zone. Um, when we gave up our hits and, and you know just trying to minimize the damage is is, uh, is key um, I'm not I'm not overly sold that we aren't tipping pitches a little bit too so I'm gonna have to go back and look at video on that and see if I can pick something up on a couple of these arms that that shouldn't be getting hit the way they are but um, but but they did so we got to figure out either get better or, or figure out what's going on you were still calling the pitches today no, I, I didn't. I didn't call pitches. Yes, I called the one pitch, and oh, I gave okay. up a three-run homer. <laughs> so I, um, I told Sammy I'm not calling any more pitches. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, every once in a while, Sammy will ask me what I, I, I give. I give our pitching coach the reins to do that. He, he's um, he's earned that right. He spends the most time with those guys. Has the best feel for them. Um, there's times when you know I have the right to over override um, if I need to and there's times where Sam and I have a great relationship he'll he'll ask what I think on certain pitches and you know yesterday he asked what I thought on I said yeah breaking ball three run homer and I'm like quit asking me I guess <laughs> you know you're the pitching coach you, you throw them but uh, you know it, it's one of those things yeah that if I have a good gut feel on something I'll, I'll try to go with it but um, you know sometimes sometimes both of us are at a loss like man we're not sure what to throw here. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you, Willie.